channel, it's Brie TV. If you're new here, I am Brie, your posh ex soft French Brastle does reaction lifestyle videos. If you've noticed, I am wearing a Georgia State lanyard because I am back from orientation. I'm going to include a quick little montage of orientation because I couldn't really film much because we were doing so much walking and lectures and I didn't want to like be recording the person. So here's a quick little aesthetic montage. the second lane from left. And we're back. So I hope you enjoyed that. I have on my back right here, by the way, I'm rocking my cancer tank top. Why did I do that? From Fashion Nova. I got it on sale for like $6. We love that. But um, I might do a haul. So this is my Georgia State little swag bag or whatever. It's full of stuff that I've gotten and got throughout orientation from the moment I checked in until the moment I left. So. And I get to keep the bag. So we're gonna start from here before I get started and explain the whole process, point of this video, which is why I chose Georgia State over all my other colleges that I accepted to. Because in all my college videos, people have asked in the comments, Georgia State, like congrats to Georgia State, but why that over UGA? Why that over Mercer, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna explain to y'all because I've heard that question a lot and I don't blame you for asking, but I'm explaining to you why specifically I chose Georgia State. So first we have from orientation, the Panther Pass, it says boarding all panthers this is from the study abroad program um so basically what they did they explained us the study abroad process and what they did they gave us a panther pass which is basically like a version of a boarding pass you write your name on it um you put your dream destination i put ireland or southeast asia for where i'd want to study abroad and my dream activity would be to visit historical sites experience different cultures and city life along with cultures also including food and traditions and customs that I could actually take part in, even fashion, cause yes. And then on the side, you know how like a boarding pass will say where and when you're going. So where says student orientation and when says summer 21, flight 2025, hashtag 2025, so that's when I'm graduating. And basically it has this little QR code on it and you scan it to upload your boarding pass to their website, which is basically like a free raffle thing. And I guess if you win, you win a prize. I don't know the prizes, but I'm gonna scan mine later. And on this side, they have like little stats about the study abroad program. Next, this is from one of the Panther Connect programs, which was everyone got a little stuff, a little Panther. And we got to stuff it at the end of the um, um, little program. Basically, they explained to us their um, Connect thing where some of the committee members that are students or graduate students that came back have a hand in plenty of events and activities for the entire campus and the students within the campus such as movies um cultural events and such so this is the panther so cute we got to stuff it it's a little velcro thing you just stuff it and boom you get a free panther so we love that this is at the end of the thing orientation went from 8 30 to about 4 15 we started about 8 45 you know some students were still coming in so i say really we started at 9 to 4 15 if that helps so kind of like a normal school day um we also got a free um coupon well coupon to get a free shirt from the bookstore and as also i'm an honors college student so i also got another free t-shirt so this one's the one i got from the bookstore every student gets one of the little um tickets coupons for a free shirt so this one's not for honors the honors one's still in the bag so i get this little shirt for free georgia state and then from the honors college they gave me this shirt when i was registering for my classes and it looks like this and it says georgia state university honors college so i have this little plum kind of color and i have a black which is also and i have a blue um pullover sweatshirt that you've seen in my graduation pictures if you've checked that video and or my Instagram. Next, I have 
some sunglasses from the study abroad program, UV protection, um, a Georgia State mask. We love that. Gotta stay masked up during this whole panoramic. Um, a fanny pack, also from study abroad. Study abroad, study abroad had all the good stuff. They also had t-shirts, but I didn't grab one because they were really limited on sizes. I think they only had a small and a large because everyone had already grabbed them from prior guests. I don't know. But they, but I got everything else. I was like, you know, I have enough shirts and I already have room for those, so it's fine. But basically, you get a lot of free crap if you go in person for orientation. Um, this is a Panther Pride little, I guess, car sticker or something? I don't know. Um, this is basically something that talks about all the recreational services at the aquatic that the recreational center offers, such as aquatics, intramural sports, sports clubs, fitness classes, like for sports clubs, if you can get an, a couple of members for whatever sport you wanna create, like whatever club, you can go tell the rec recreational center and what they'll do, they will, I guess, I think he said they'll either fund it or allow you to do the sport club within the recreational center, like fencing or whatever, as long as you have active members. Um, the fitness classes, instructional clinics, I know I saw the, um, weighted gym area and then the normal gym and all the treadmills and such um the fitness center they have personal training and nutrition assessments touch the earth which is like their rock wall rock wall outdoor trips clinics and gear rental and they also have other stuff like indoor track you go around eight times that's a mile the pool i think it's half olympic size pool aerobic and dance studio um boulder cave climbing wall dry sauna exercise room game room gymnasiums hot tub all that this is just the, talking about the Panther Involvement Network, which is basically a way for students to get involved either around campus or in the community or just normal events. This is the top half of the coupon thing they gave us um, for the bookstore, which is basically where you can get all your textbooks from and where I got the free shirt. This is the bottom half. With this coupon, I can get 30% off one apparel, gift, or supply item. Um, this was basically... A picture of the schedule with the Wi-Fi written on it. So basically, they kept you. That way, you were aware of what was going to happen and what was going to happen. They gave me dark rose bold and chocolatey coffee, bro. What the hell? I even noticed that they gave me coffee. I love that. Anyone who's watched the channel knows I love coffee. Okay. Um, hand sanitizer. Love that. I was really panicking because I forgot my hand sanitizer at home. But they have so many hand sanitizer stations around campus. It was awesome. Um, another ring light. We love that. This is my third ring light from them. Um, this little study abroad program slash credit card, debit card wallet holder. There's a little bit more stuff in here, y'all. Um, I have a pencil. Two different pens. I love that. One from honors and one from a study thing. What I think is a stress ball from Honors College. Y'all know me so well, literally, because I'd be stressed. Um, Reese's Pieces because, um, Reese's Pieces, Reese's Pieces, because Honors College gave out candy and I was like, Reese's. Um, a little stylus keychain slash pen, I think, awesome. A pen from Georgia State itself that says hashtag the state way, state not southern. Um, and then last but not least, an honors college pin and another pin. And then the bag. So that's everything I got from orientation in my little swag bag collection. So before I jump into why Georgia State, this is about free. Georgia State loves giving really free stuff. Every person that I've met there that like was in charge, had a part in orientation, mentioned how much Georgia State loves giving like free t-shirts, raffle like raffling off stuff like to the um it was atlanta united i think the soccer team whatever it is and stuff like that so my that's pretty awesome to me we love free stuff i love free stuff and the honors college because i'm part of it they do like um like kind of like honors college connect things or like they do boba and like they were doing boba all spring i was so upset i couldn't go because i'm you know hard school yet but they're doing like little boba and chat situations where they give me out boba and they're already sealed and ready to go. She just grab it and go. You could talk to some people and dip. And it was like, um. But yeah, let's just talk about what you can expect at orientation. I don't know the schedule will be like this next year or whatever semester they do it again for freshmen. But if you want to know what I went through, it was 9 o'clock was welcome to the hashtag state way, which is basically where they um 
they did a little icebreaker game where all the um new student orientation leaders basically introduced themselves their age well what um what grade they're in i guess of college like what what grade of college i guess they were in i forgot the word i'm sorry um their names their major and then they kind of um had the athletic director come in the cheerleaders and one member of the dance team came in did a little cheer i think they did one of the fight songs then their state not southern cheer um then at 9 30 one of the directors for the school i think or whatever the student director i think came in did a little student success thing he was funny i like that they like they acknowledge that we are grown we say hello we well they kind of they didn't say fuck but they said like the f like what the f like hello stuff like that but they kind of like just acknowledge that we're grown we do cuss you know um so that was that he was really funny he was cool he was throwing out free stuff too there and then i didn't answer questions but if you answered the question right he threw out stuff and could like for answer how many credits like how, what's the average number of credit hours you can get for a class and stuff like that you got something free it was cool and then that was at 9 30 then at 10 15 a.m so you can kind of gauge how much time that is we did a small group lunch and academic advising thing where you break into small groups based on what is on your hold on what is on your thing so mine said honors and then this was for something later but mine said honors so you break up into your little group honor students of course were all together and then everyone else kind of was in, in smaller groups individually my group was only maybe 10 of us they take you to your um place to schedule your courses again if you're a normal, if normal freshman your courses are already kind of picked for you honor students have a teeny bit more leeway ish because we have we can't do all the same classes as a normal freshman kind of because there are some that are restricted just to the freshman learning community and then there's honors learning community so it's a little bit different but we got our more personal ish advisement where academic advisors came in everything we were in our own little room just kind of doing making our own little schedules on the computers and everything um and then we went to lunch you got to eat at the dining hall they have the little so machines you get the movie theater where you like press it and then boom they had drinks i just got flavored water nothing special it was like blackberry ginger lemon i think or raspberry flavored water i think that was the mixture of it um the food looked appetizing but like some of the food was like it was a hit or miss i honestly i feel the dining hall was a hit or miss um i can't remember which one we went to i want to say it was piedmont central's dining hall or whichever one is across from the commons slash the mix race track area whichever dining hall is over there um the food honestly was hit or miss some people love their food some will like their food some people loved it some people like and eh. some people didn't like it because the pizza was uh, the corn was uh chicken was good because i was like let me just try a little bit before i even know if i wanted meal plan let me just try out what i could expect so i did that again food hit or miss dining hall is nice though for real um then after that we went on a little tour of the entire campus or pretty much the entire campus basically they did a little trip my guide samuel i think did a little trivia thing like basically asking again like oh yeah what was that what i was talking about what is it for blah 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 it was cool um that was until 2 p.m we also before that i went to get my academic i went to get my panther card which was basically my id to get around the campus and allow me to do certain things um so that was cool it was a quick process I saw where my dorm area would be. I didn't see what the dorm itself looked like, but I saw the building. Um, I went inside the student center, the recreational center. I saw there was a Chick-fil-A area right under, I think, where I got my Panther ID thing. They have a steak and shake. They have a Panther club where you can get little snacks and treats. So that's cool. The um, This is a um, milkshake place called Sweet Stack. It's right by my dorm, so that's so cool. I kind of love that because I want to go there for a date in Atlanta. So I'm actually kind of excited that it's right there. Um, then we went to Money Matters, which was at 2 p.m. By the way, I kind of loved my lunch table. The people I was sitting with in my group, they are honestly pretty cool. Love them. I don't remember all their names. I forgot to get their name, like rem keep note of their names or get their like social medias, but it's fine. I'll probably figure it out later. But um, I have a photo with them. We took a selfie. <laughs> but yeah, then we went to Money Matters, which was at 2 p.m. And we basically just talked about financial aid. That was so tiring. That was like 45 minutes of just, to an, it was about maybe four or five minutes to an hour of just financial aid. And I was like, ugh, what? 
tiring, sleepy, honestly, I want to go sleep. Some people have their AirPods in, some people were just like this, and I was like, bro, this is so long, and I'm so tired. Um, then we did the Panther Connections, which is when I got my stuff Panther, and the study abroad stuff, because we just walked around and basically learned about the different social group committee kind of things you can get involved in, and um, study abroad. And then we did the next steps, was basically just like finishing up everything, and get like a little quick calendar of what's coming up, what we need to get done before school starts, and that was it. Like Im submit your immunize immunization records and all that, and you're set. Um, honors college students, we are able to choose what time and day we want to move in. Normal freshmen cannot, which is awesome. Kind of an advantage because I'm choosing the first day that available to move in, which is the 18th, early in the morning, because I just want to get there and be set. I don't want to have to come in at a random time of the month. I'm so happy and I think two of my roommates are also moving in around the same day and time period as me like one after each other and then one of my roommates is gonna come a little bit later so that's fine it's awesome we get to see them sooner and I kind of love that and now that I've told you about orientation I'm basically gonna give you a quick rundown of why Georgia State so this is gonna be a little bit kind of because it's not too much to say I'm gonna tell you all my top five schools why I applied to them and then what made me apply to Georgia State instead like what maybe apply to Georgia State and then why I chose Georgia State over them. So let's get into it. My top five colleges were Mercer, UGA, U Miami, Georgia Southern, and Agnes Scott. By the way, again, this list is not including Georgia State. So why Mercer and UGA? It's simple. Their law program. The law programs were both really good and they're ranked really well statewide and then nationally, UGA is ranked well for law. And then I think Mercer's ranked number 63, and then UGA was like 13 or 15 at the time when I looked. So I was like, okay, I have to go there. And then UGA, while they do not have a high diversity, their black student groups, um, organizations, associations are all very, they make you feel welcomed, if that makes sense. They're really welcoming. I've looked at vlogs and such. They're just a welcoming group. The moment I got accepted, I started getting letters, handwritten, emails, everything from students that currently are part of the organizations um alumni everything just like welcome me saying oh yeah you should go join i think it's called uga days or something like that or black days something days i think and i was just like okay this sounds like a great way to connect with people network but at the same time i was like mm, i don't want to go to athens and they uga did not have the major i wanted i'm going to be on the pre-law track and i was hoping to get my degree within six years through a program and i don't think uga offered that program whereas mercer and georgia state did but UGA does have a great law program, but they didn't have a major I would want. So the closest I could find was international affairs. And as interesting as that like sounds, say I don't want to be a pre-law student anymore. I don't want to be a lawyer. I was like, at the end of the day, I still want a degree I can fall back on and feel fine with a master's or a master's in. And I was just like, I don't really want a master's in international affairs if I don't want to be a lawyer. I want something a little bit more mm, like criminal justice, political science, or... Um, mine which is law and society which is like a mixture of political science and criminal justice and i can pick which way i want to go in the end like the pathway which is pretty great and uga just kind of wasn't giving that to me mercer great law program but i did not want to stay on campus for three years in um housing that's not even that great because every video i've watched they're like housing isn't that good housing not that i did something with my room but housing isn't that great and then for the mama you're paying even though mercer did i was in their top five applicants this year so even though I had a chance of going to the school basically almost free of charge, it was like, is it though? Is it worth it to stay in Macon? No, there's nothing really to do in Macon in my opinion and from some of the videos I've watched. In housing, I don't really like or that speaks to me, not really. I'd have to share my room with somebody and it's just like, no, I don't, I don't want it that bad. U Miami, great school, prestigious title, prestigious name. They're in Miami. Well, they're in Coral Gables, but Miami. Great school, great environment. Well, I've heard the environment has their, they've had some racist moments, but among students and I feel like you can get that out almost every school though, no matter how liberal it is. There's always that person. <laughs> there's always that group. There's always a homophobic or racist group, no matter what. Um, or misogynistic or trash there's always a trash group at every school i swear but um other than that one negative it was like oh my god new miami love it one of my dream schools so pretty 
the research program is amazing their campus amazing the students amazing i love connecting with all of them but <laughs> it's that but it's too expensive for the lack of scholarships i would be able to use because i cannot take my zelle or hope over and i would only have basically i'd have no scholarships to really transfer to you miami it was like what is the point there is no i'm not paying i would never expect my parents to pay well my father to pay seven over over seventy thousand dollars for school i can't phantom the idea of sending no it's not worth it unless you're giving me a full ride i just can't see my school in miami at the end of the day as i love the school as big as my aspirations were it's too expensive no it's, i don't think any education is that worth it when i can go to a normal school get all my um small core classes out the way and then focus on my degree for a cheaper price i understand maybe if i transferred but for doing my whole four years there god no <laughs> no no undergraduate degree is that worth it in my opinion well maybe if you're getting in with scholarships and stuff go for it but to pay the set i'm out of state you know it's the same in state or out of state i think but like near seventy three thousand. oh my god no um i'm georgia southern i applied to them because they're my safety school i didn't really have a reason for why i wanted to go they were just a safety school i could apply for free and i was like say less but then it's in jonesboro or statesboro or hinesville i think and i don't want to live at either of those locations and I'm like, I feel like I wouldn't get much done. Actually, I'm more of an introvert. I probably could get my studying done, but I don't think I'd have a fun time there versus Georgia State. I'm living in the city, the city life. There's just, I feel like there's more connections as a future law lawyer, law student. I have more I can do there in Atlanta, more connections I can make in Atlanta than I can in Statesboro, Jonesboro, or Hinesville. Um, then Agnes Scott, great school, love the community service programs love their travel abroad only problem is i don't want to go to all girls school i want diversity i just don't think i can find that in an all girls school yes there's diversity among race ethnicity backgrounds demographics income all that social economic status but it's just all girls i want a mixture of everyone and i just can't get that i can't so what made me apply to georgia state they're cost efficient they have a great law program statewide they have large diversity humongous diversity it's first of all liberal as hell we love that literally it's in atlanta <laughs> you, you, it's you can't can't get more diverse than that i swear they have the most black graduates across the nation like across the nation most black graduates that means something to me as a black girl that means i know you are going to be looking out for my best interest in terms of me graduating you're not trying to see me fail and try to keep my money so you can hold me back longer no you want me to succeed and i love that and in the city life and opportunities again network 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 I need that so then i know some people asked about the georgia state um acceptance stats i'm an honor student so my stats and like the average stats are a little bit different but i will tell you both so for a normal student for georgia state like an incoming freshman i guess average gpa is like a 3.4 3.5 a 1090 on the sat two years of foreign language three years social studies four years math science and english but then honors college student they didn't have like a specific requirement. I think they look for at least a 4.0 or like a 3.9 GPA. I don't remember the exact requirements. If I can find them, I'll put them here. But for our like incoming class, our stats were a 3.93 to 4.1 GPA, an eight to nine range of dual enrollment, IB and AP credits, and being in the 12, top 12% 12 of your class. So now how do my stats compare to that? I'm in a 1040 on my SAT, so obviously I don't fit in that range for my SAT because I'm not a test taker. I suck at tests, but I'm great at presentations, communication, writing. It's just when you have me do a test, I freeze up and I'm like, I have bad anxiety. My anxiety doesn't help when I'm in a testing situation. So really, my intelligence does not show through on a test or a quiz. But if you were to have me just explain it to you or do a hands-on experiment or science or whatever, I could do it. Designing things, PowerPoints, I got you. I can give a lecture, but I cannot give you a test written. No, can't do it. I can give you a paper though. I can give you a PowerPoint, but that moment that test comes out, game over. Um, I made a 4.25. I applied for 4.25 GPA. That was going on my junior year GPA. I started at 4.5, ended up at 4.25. This plus point, fuck calculus. But um, graduating this year, I graduated with a 4.15 weighted and 3.9 unweighted. So I literally was the range. And then for my dual Roman credits, I had six credits. I had six in psychology, sociology, economics, Latin one, English one, and two. 
I got a 98 in sociology, economics, Latin 1, English 1 and 2, and I think I made an 80. Oh my bad. I got a 90 in all those subjects except for Latin 1 and Psych. I made an 80 in Psych and Latin for dual enrollment. And then I have five AP World AP credits for World US his World and US History, Bio, Lang, and let's actually call it four because I was supposed to have five for environmental science, but you know, I didn't take the exam because I think they wanted a four for me to get a credit for that, and that was not gonna happen. So I never took the exam. So I basically have four dual four AP, six dual enrollment, which is what? Like one over the average of about 10 credits there so it's pretty good and then for my credits earned i had six social sciences 5.5 english five mathematics and science because i'm an honor i was an honor student accelerated student at my high school so because of that i was basically taking an additional math and science course compared to the normal students i guess because honors you're expected to take we're basically like a grade level ahead kind of because basically you start your credits your high school credits eighth grade if that makes sense so you basically have to get an additional one for your senior year because you can't have a free period at least at my school well my old school thank god and then i had four foreign languages because i took three years of um spanish and then my one latin class so as you compared to an average student i basically did two times i applied to two one half to two times more credits than an average student. And I applied within or one above the range of an honor student. And then for my extracurriculars and what I basically took, whether it's leadership positions or clubs, I was a part of the NGSS or NHS. Yeah, NGSS, Eco Club, which is basically ecology club, environmental club, you do community service, clean up, eco trails, hikes, recycling projects, all of that. I was treasurer for that, so I had a leadership position and a community service. I was part of National Honor Society, so, and I was the treasurer, so another leadership, another community service. Um, I was part of National Society for High School Scholars. I'm an ambassador for that, so I'm still part of it. So that's a more so leadership position. I was a editor, host, well, editor, co-host, and writer for video production. I was also like a part-time treasurer because we didn't like have a treasurer position. That was basically the treasurer. So you could call that like an art, an arts and leadership position type role, job role. And then I had journalism slash yearbook slash newsletters where I was in charge of fundraising, editing. Well, not edit, I was supposed to be editing, but it ended up changing to fundraising and writing. And then I was the student body treasurer my sophomore year, class treasurer from freshman through junior year, and then class representative my senior year for Student Government Association. Um, I did some scholarship programs and internships through a couple of Envision programs and such. So, you know, I had a little like, I guess you could say introductory experience into my coursework. I don't think I need to an answer for y'all why Georgia State, but I feel like, cause I feel like this whole video pretty much summed up why Georgia State. But if we need to basically give some more reasons, I'll go through what I wrote down during orientation. Some extra stuff I maybe didn't mention. They have Cinefest, which is where you basically students can get in for free admission. Guests are like three to five dollars for a ticket. Con concessions is between 50 cents to $1.50. And basically it's a student kind of led cinema organization thing where the committee, that's a part of that board, I think it's a video the video game movie cinematic committee part basically chooses movies to stream that are that have not hit DVD yet that like just come out so it's not old movies it's newer movies and they basically set the cinematic experience for students and if they want to bring a guest that's not a student this, that guest just pays for their ticket and it's cheap concessions and they get to watch movies which is pretty cool it's cheaper than your normal AMC theater um Let's see, it's an open campus, which I guess is a pro and a con for people because you know, open campus meaning you do have other people walking along the streets. You do have to deal with, either way, there's just gonna be crime on an open or closed campus, but you know, we're in Atlanta, we're in the streets of Atlanta at night. I don't have any nighttime classes, but I can see how that would be a con for some people. 
one con I'm, I'm gonna give you some cons I'm not gonna give you all pros one con is that one of the housings I want to say it was Patton Hall or Piedmont North it was one of the Piedmonts or it was Patton I think it was one of the Piedmonts I noticed some of the windows for the housing had boarded up windows and like one of the housings had boarded up windows it just wasn't but I looked at my dorm area and I was like ooh they looked at that one and I was like ooh <laughs> this is why some people get apartments because I get it if I was a fresh, if I was a normal fresh and not honors, I definitely would get my own apartment <laughs> looking at that. Um, it's ranked number one, Georgia State's ranked number one nationwide for undergrad, un, for the undergraduate experience, which makes sense. You're in Atlanta, you have very hands-on. Mind you, here's a con, communication sucks. You try calling Georgia State, good luck, you may be on hold for three hours. They email fast, Is the honors college emails fast, they're always bad emails. I can't speak for the normal freshman experience but honors college emails back fast but you want to call them god bless you good luck um they have nap pods which is in some of the study areas and lounges they have nap pods in case you want to go to school take a nap they have complimentary phone charging areas one of the libraries or has a coffee and tea shop which i love because i need my caffeine um they teach over 70 language that languages there i want to learn arabic i was between arabic sign language Korean or Spanish, but I'm just gonna do Arabic. If I enjoy it, I may go further in Arabic or I might continue Spanish since I did go all the way to Spanish 3 plus the teeny bit of Latin. So, um, they have a Panther, it's called the they have a bus basically, and it's called the Panther Express, which makes them a little bit different from other schools because I know not every school has their own bus system. Some do, but this one's called the Panther Express, and they also have a, their own police escort for they can basically escort you around campus at night or in a day if you just don't feel safe or don't know how to get somewhere they do that the bus goes to and from dorms to classes and such and i think the dining halls if i'm correct it's fine me that don't really work because like the bus stops right in front of my dorm and then the dining hall is right across the street and then there's a racetrack right there so i'm set um they have two apps i gotta look at which is live safe and handshake the live safe basically lets you contact any local I think officers or campus officers really quick so you can like get an escort or something um there's a panther statue in the student center slash speech area it's called bronzy and apparently students during finals week will go and rub the statue for good luck um they have study abroad across I think what was it 70 or 80 countries um and I learned that they have a study abroad program in Seoul of South Korea and living there is approximate for um a student, the living living cost of living is about one thousand two hundred dollars or one thousand five hundred dollars, which is pretty good. That's cheaper than your normal housing, and they offer like one k in fixed scholarships and two k to seven point five k range scholarships. And then also, I made a note about my dining area again, my housing again, because Commons. I'm saying Commons, which is the upperclassmen slash honors learning community housing area. And it says commons is beside racetrack a dining hall sweet stack which if you on if you've ever been on Atlanta TikTok it's this really cool milkshake place I'll put the TikTok right here and they basically do milkshakes and ice cream and then these little interesting snacks and sweet and confectionery confectionery stuff t stacked on top and it just looks so cool I want to go there for an Atlanta date um it's also by um commons it's also by a counseling and testing center in the mix which is an apartment center and yeah, I feel it's a nice rundown of basically why Georgia State. So yeah, that's pretty much all for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I feel like this was a pretty in-depth explanation of Georgia State. We can expect that the freshman orientation as honors or regular. Um, why I chose Georgia State other over all my other colleges I got accepted into. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other questions you want me to answer, leave them in the comments down below. I will answer them. If I didn't cover it, let me know. I will answer everything. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, leave any video ideas below in the comments, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.